Hello, today is Wednesday, March 4th, 2020. My name is Daniel Mullaney and behind the camera is Caitlin Yates. We are here to film a video source inspection for SciTech Process Solutions. Today we will be viewing a refurbished mask cleaner. This is a model FSC 132 mask cleaning system. It is originally an Ultra T brand. Uh, our customer is located in the southern United States and their PO number is 218. 9680. This customer has purchased a system that will come with masks uh, with um, chucks to run 5 inch, 7 inch, and 9 inch masks. We currently have the 5 inch mask chuck installed. The other chucks will be included with the system, uh, but to prevent wasting time on the removal and exchange of the um, chucks, we're only going to be demonstrating one size today. Uh, however, all the chucks fit the same in the system and they can be swapped out uh, with three different screws um, with, a, uh, with one tool. So this system has both high pressure DI uh, has both a high pressure DI spray arm as well as a brush scrub with a surfactant dispense. The brush scrub has both a DI and surfactant dispense as the brush will first dispense surfactant, then it will follow up with a water dispense, the DI dispense, so that way this scrubbing um, can occur with a, a solution mixture between the two, um, the two liquids. As most mask cleaners, it has a heat lamp and a CO2 reionizer. The CO2 reionizer is provided to prevent the corona effect, which is high pressure DI water stripping electrons off of your chrome mask. Essentially, by reionizing the water, you no longer strip the electrons off the chrome and maintain the integrity of the mask. <clears throat> This customer also purchased a surfactant canister, which we have on display right here. Typically, the surfactant canister will be in the chaseway or on the floor next to the tool, uh, but we have on display for the uh, source inspection purposes. So what I'll do is, uh, Caitlin, if you can show the different items on here. We have a cycle start button right here. We have a lid open button here. We have a key switch that allows us to change between programming and maintenance and operation. We have an EMO button. We have RPM adjustments for the spin speed. We have a Festo PLC controller to uh, program the system as well as run all manual modes. We have the tachometer for the spin speeds. We have the nitrogen dry pressure and we have the CO2 reionizer pressure. The CO2 reionizer is at about set at about 20 it is important to maintain that pressure set point as that is proper for um, maintaining a, an ability to mix the DI water and the CO2 so that one, you don't have too little CO2 which will allow the corona effect to occur or too much CO2 which will cause air to enter into the high pressure pump um, which will cause a gasket to fail on the high pressure pump. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, is we're going to lid open. So there we go. Press it and the hood will now open. We're going to look into the chamber. Here we have the high pressure arm that I described. That has two, dis two spray nozzles, but it is really just a, a single dispense. Um, here we have the spray arm for the brush scrub. There's actually a nylon brush on the bottom that is aligned within a few millimeters of the surface for the mask the brush scrub will come across and agitate the surface, not by direct contact, but by um, creating or uh, mixing a solution of the DI water and the surfactant, which will still create a scrubbing effect without nylon brush contact. Uh, here we have the N2 blow off, which will blow off the majority of the water um, after the cleaning has been completed prior to the heat lamp turning on. Okay. So the way this system works for actually initiating a program is that when I close this uh, with this door, um, the system will automatically start. So once I close this, the system will begin. If you closed it for whatever reason and you did not want the system to start, you can immediately press the but same button and it will abort. You can also EMO, but it's not really necessary for that. I'm going to step out of the scene for a second because I'm going to turn on our external blower. The system has an internal blower, but we also have an external blower hooked up to simulate the exhaust that would be expected in the fab. 
Uh, the exhaust specification will uh, is similar to this, but usually in a fab, exhaust is a little bit stronger than what we experience here. Um, regardless, our process dries the substrate. It's within five minutes, uh, and it's a pretty standard cycle. So we're gonna go ahead and get this process going. Hold it down for a second, let go. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to see into the chamber very well because of the dark hood, but I can. And the spray arm is currently dispensing back and forth. We set the surfactant dispense to about uh, 15 seconds in this circumstance. In application, your surfactant dispense is gonna be closer to something like three to six seconds. Um, the reason why we have it so long is because our uh, surfactant is actually mixed with GI water in the canister uh, to maintain our volume. In application in the fab, you'll have strictly surfactant in the canister. Um, so the first step was the, the dispense of the surfactant. The second step was dispense of DI water through the brush. I can see in there um, just barely that a, at a, at a, uh, like a bubbling suds effect has happened to the surface. Um, so that was the initial cleaning. We now have the spray arm oscillating back and forth. The spray arm is set for a 60 second, 60 second clean. And taking a look down at uh, our high pressure pump area, which we can actually show this right now. Uh, beneath here is our high pressure pump. You can see this through the window, but it says we're setting ours at 1500 PSI. 1500 PSI is a standard setting for this type of system. In here we have a variety of different valves and interlocks that have been uh, calibrated to run this system properly. They're looking to make sure that we have the proper flow, proper pressure, and uh, all correct facilities so the system doesn't run dry or uh, have any malfunctions. All of that is listed in the manual. We also on this side here have settings for the surfactant dispense, the DI water dispense, the N2 for the nitrogen dry, um, and the, uh, the, ga the gauge right here. There's also a waste wafer release setting here at the very bottom, but that is not used in this circumstance as there is no vacuum required for a mass cleaning. The vacuum would be required if this was configured to um, high pressure wash wafers as well. <clears throat> All right, so we have about 20 seconds more right now of our high RPM N2 blow off step. Right now we're, we have N2 blowing across the, the mask and we are running at 1800 RPM. Our objective right here is to spin at our fastest setting while blowing nitrogen to, to physically remove as much of the water as we can from the surface. Our goal here is to sling and blow off as much water as we can. We are now moving into a lower RPM heat cycle which is at 1000 RPM. Looking in, you can see, now you can see actually the red glow, I believe, um, from the chamber. So, I mean, I can see it, but through the camera, you should be able to see that as well. Now we're gonna be using this heat lamp to dry as well. And now, instead of using a, a physical slinging of the water, we are also trying to evaporate the water using the uh, heat lamp. So we've got 80 seconds left of that before we're gonna have a 15 second ramp down period. Actually, we may have programmed in 30 seconds, but it's, it's, a, it's a low time. It's just a, a ramp down intermediate time to let the uh, chuck settle. So you're not gonna be able to see on the back of the system. We don't have much room back here, uh, typical to a fab. But looking back here, we have the drain for the water. We also have the CO2 inlet. We have a CDA inlet. We have a DI water inlet. We have the heat lamp power coming out as well. We have an inlet for the 110 volt power supply. There is a surfactant dispense inlet and there is an N2 inlet. Lastly, we have the about two, and a half, two to two and a half inch exhaust outlet. So we're looking at uh, quite a variety of different 
uh, facilities here, but these are all pretty standard ones that you'll find in a fab, and they're all about uh, quarter inch lines. All of that facility information has previously been provided to the customer uh, and is also listed in the manual so they could prepare for installation on arrival. <clears throat> okay, we have now entered our final spin dry. Now we are just strictly spinning. It's listed as a spin dry, um, but, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's more of a um, post lamp dry spin down period. Um, it's designed in, but we're still sitting at the same thousand RPM. Uh, personally, I do not believe that this spin period is as beneficial to the drying. Really, you're going to perform the majority of that with the heat lamp, uh, but it is programmed in, so we're demonstrating it. Okay, so now the program has ended. What we're going to do is we're going to open the lid. Okay, we're going to now inspect the chamber. And the, we're going to see a little bit of residual water left in here. That's expected. Um, what we're going to do now is inspect the surface, though, of the mask. And we lift that up. Lift that. Lift that. Okay. And this is a, uh, a scrap mask, so you see some scratches on there, but we're not looking for that. I'm inspecting for any water, and this mask is perfectly dry. All right. So we're now going to set the mask back on because our next objective is going to be to demonstrate oh. There we go. Okay. The manual mode options that we have here as well as the recipe design. So, the first movement that we're going to do, or the first task, is to move into PLC access mode. That's done by simply turning the key over. And the first, first you can program up to six recipes in this controller. In order to select a recipe to run during programming, you press 1, which means I would like to select a recipe, and hit enter. You now select the recipe that you'd like to run. We, we're currently running program one. I'm gonna say, let's run program two, enter. Okay, so we would now be able to run program two. If I want to adjust a program, I select the program that I'd like to adjust. Again, by pressing one, let's select a program. Program two. Oh, I went a little bit out of order there. Let's turn that dispense off, enter, okay. So again, select program one, select program, program two, enter, okay? And once you're actually in this select program screen, now the program's been selected, you have to, this is what mistake I made, you have to reset by turning the key, see we have program two, and now we're gonna go back in so I can use the rest of the functions of the manual mode. Next I'll pray, say program, or, this is not saying program two. Now I'm gonna press two to design a recipe. Okay, design recipe, enter. So now we have the design recipe options. So first we have a pre-wet. That is not a feature that is included in this system, so we can change that pre-wet to zero. Enter. Dispense one is our surfactant dispense. So let's say if I was designing this for a fab application, I would press six and then clear for the zero to remove it. We now have six set for the dispense. Dispense two is the DI dispense for the scrubbing. 30 sounds appropriate, so we're gonna hit enter and press past that. We now have the high pressure spray arm. We're gonna wanna wash this mask for a while, so let's say we're gonna do a 90 second spray arm. There are no dispense three and four. N2 dry, this is our blow off step, so we're gonna blow off for let's say uh, 75 seconds. We'll continue. Now how long are we going to run the heat lamp for? Let's run this heat lamp for 120 seconds. 
And now the final spin, which I said is fairly unnecessary in my opinion, so we'll go with zero seconds on that. And now once we've reached select item N, that means that our program has officially been programmed. You press enter, it doesn't do anything. So what we would do is, is again, we can now reset. We're running program two. I'm gonna check program two, two, enter. And now I see we have a zero pre-wet, which I changed. The rest will change as well. An item to note, I cannot change just one item without finishing the entire recipe. So let's say I chose 65 here, and then I went enter, on to the next, on to the next. I said, okay, now I'm good. Let's go back and run this process. If I were to go back and run now program two, I would not have that adjustment. I can demonstrate that by turning here. And I just had some assistance to turn off the blower. Hopefully you can hear a little better. Now let's move here again. Ch ch let's check. And we have a zero for the pre-wet. So in order to adjust a recipe, you have to go through the entire recipe and then it automatically saves it. So again, we're going to reset. <clears throat> and now we're going to go through the various um, items that we can individually actuate. Now, we're going to provide with our manual an addendum because the manual that we had had the, the proper physical configurations, but it did not have the same um, programming in the Festo. So we have an addendum that, that shows the current out inputs, outputs on this system. But to demonstrate, three is the blower. The internal blower just turned on. I can hear it right now. Okay, now I'm going to turn this off. Okay, now I'm going to turn on rinse. Okay, and actually, rinse is a feature that is not uh, listed on this one. Rinse would be an additional output. In this circumstance, the rinse is provided by the high pressure spray arm. So that's why nothing happened on this one. Okay, then we're going to go to five, which is heat lamp. You can see the heat lamp has just turned on right there. Okay. We're going to go to six, uh, the vacuum pump, not used. So we'll jump to number seven. Number seven is the brush. Okay, and I can hear the brush rotating and I can see it right now. Then we have eight, flush and prime pump. This is a very important uh, feature to note. I'm going to press eight, enter. So right now I have DI water from facilities flowing through the high pressure spray arm, but we're not running high pressure. The purpose of this is to flush and prime your pump. Anytime the system sits for a long period of time, it is important to prime the pump. It's not required to perform this task daily, but if the system sits for weeks at a time, the DI water, for whatever reason, may not be completely filled properly in the system, and if the system runs high pressure without full DI water, air will enter the pump and pop a gasket, ruining the pump. So always flush after long periods of inactivity. Okay, we have the N2 blow off. Okay, there we go, I can hear it going. We also have the high pressure pump. So we're not gonna run that right now. Oh, I can actually run that. So I'm gonna do eight flush, turn on the flush first, then turn on the high pressure pump. Now we can do 10. So there we go, it's running right now. Now, I could have run that high pressure pump without the flush on, but if you do that for more than three seconds, you're risking, again, running the pump without the proper DI flow through the system. So always make sure you turn on the flush before you run the high pressure manually, and even then, I would not suggest running it for a very long period of time. You can, for whatever reason, bring air into the pump and you've caused a problem. Okay, number 11, we have surfactant dispense. I'm actually not going to do those. We'll be dripping surfactant into the chamber, but 11 is surfactant dispense. 12 is the DI dispense through the brush scrub as well. Number 14 opens and closes the hood. So 14 was open, even though it's already open. Now 14 again closes it. 15 does the start, la start lamp only which is interesting, they have an output for just turning on the lamp on this system. Um, now we have 17, which is high pressure arm movement. Let me show you that. So we can open it again through there by 14. 
17 is the high pressure arm movement. Okay. And now 19 is the brush arm movement. Okay. Oh. There we go. Turned it off. All right. Now, last we have uh, the ability to also run the chuck, but you cannot do that with the door open. So let's use again our 14. Now these are going to be important for calibrating your running and calibrating your system to different set points. So let's run speed one. Okay, so speed one is the speed that's going to be used during the brush scrub step. That is done by 21 enter. We're running at 500 RPM and that can be adjusted by taking a screwdriver here and adjusting the RPM. These pots are sensitive, so a quarter turn will result in nearly 500 or 1,000 RPM and change. So make your adjustments slowly. Okay, we're now gonna go to spin speed number 22, which we have set for 1,000. So this is the speed that it's gonna run at during your heat lamp and final dry steps. Finally, we have 23. This is our high RPM set point, which is going to be used during the, the um, uh, initial N2 blow off dry step. To end, your pro or to end your spinning, use 20. So those are easy to remember because it's two zero is zero speed, two one is one, two two is setting two, and two three is setting three. All right, so at uh, this point, that will conclude our video source inspection of the system as well as our introductory training of the tool. If you have any more questions about it, please give us a call at 916-797-9000 and to reach me directly, dial extension 2201. If you have any other questions about our products or services, please visit our website directly at www.scitechprocess.com. That's S-I-T-E-K process.com. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope you have a great day.